for Cleveland's Continental Hub. Tonight, talks to merge with United Airlines heating up, and there's a lot on the line here. If the deal goes through this week, the biggest loser, it could be Cleveland. Paul Johnson is live at 10 with a potential outcome tonight. Paul? Sharon, this is the letter Mayor Jackson fired off to Dennis Kucinich asking the congressman to begin an inquiry into these merger talks, a merger that some say could cripple Hopkins. In the worst case scenario, Cleveland would lose its status as a continental hub, which means we would also lose most of Continental's 2,200 maintenance and customer service jobs based here. It would also mean fewer direct flights to and from Cleveland. With the new airline's headquarters in Chicago, getting anywhere out of here may mean a stopover in the Windy City first, which would be a major problem for frequent flyers like Clark Hayes. Big inconvenience is most of my flights I'm able to go direct. But some analysts say Chicago's O'Hare is already too congested to handle Cleveland's connecting flights, and that Cleveland Hopkins is the only one of Continental's hubs that has room to grow, and it could actually benefit from the merger. Keith Morris flies out of Atlanta and says the recent Delta Northwest merger meant more flights and more convenience. So you guys didn't lose a hub, you actually gained more flights. We gained more flights and more destinations from that merger. As I'm sure if United merges with Continental, they'll gain a lot more too. In the end, talk of another airline merger is enough to make already weary travelers head spin. If I ran my business like the airline runs theirs, I'd be out of business. I mean, they're all bad. Agree or disagree, there are more than 2,000 Continental employees here who are hoping the airline doesn't leave town. United and Continental executives reportedly met today. A decision on the merger could come by the end of this week. Uh, at least two different industry analysts say this merger probably will happen. If it does, Sharon, they say the uh, merger would be, wouldn't be complete until at least two to three years down the road. Live at Hopkins, I'm Paul Johnson, 19 Action News. Paul, thanks. Local library workers are bracing for potential layoffs, too, tonight. They're facing a double whammy, less state tax revenue, and more people using the library's free services. In Summit County, the library director told the Akron Beacon Journal he may have to lay off up to 200 workers. The alternative, approve a library levy during next week's elections. The levy would add about $2 per year year to every homeowner's property tax bill. Now, new information tonight on what's holding up construction of Cleveland's casino. We told you earlier today, Cavs owner Dan Gilbert decided to delay the opening by another year, meaning no casino until 2013. We spoke with the casino developers tonight. They're responding to several newspaper reports, all claiming it could be another three years before Cleveland's big casino opens its doors, making it the last of four casinos being built across our state. The the reason for the delay? According to the papers, problems purchasing the land downtown. Developers want to put the casino just west of Tower City on the east bank of the Cuyahoga River. But there has been speculation that may not happen and an alternative site may now be considered. Tonight, Rock Ventures, the casino developer telling 19 Action News it will announce detailed plans in the not-so-distant future that will visually and clearly outland the casino plans. We are deep into the architectural engineering phase of the project and finalizing the formal purchase of the land, they say. So there is a big announcement coming, though no one really knows what to expect here. There's been talk of a temporary casino inside the Higby building, indicating the delay may be longer than anyone would like. Cleveland students circled district headquarters this afternoon in support of their teachers' jobs. Earlier this month, school CEO Eugene Sanders announcing he will cut nearly 650 teachers from the staff. The district facing a massive budget deficit, and the school leaders claim the teachers union won't accept pay cuts so both parties have agreed to talk this out before the pink slips get mailed the young girl is dead after a car wreck on her way to school Erin Ebar pulled out of her driveway on Wilbur Road in Granger Township but she didn't see another car headed down the road the impact killed her on impact her little brother Andrew was riding in the passenger seat he is in critical condition tonight people who live nearby blame the crash on sun glare and a rapid change in the speed limit before a curve another crash in Medina County this one put a 17 year old in the hospital happened just blocks away from Buckeye High School the young man behind the wheel that black SUV there it's mangled up accidentally turned into a semi truck emergency crews pulled him from the wreckage he's at the hospital he's in stable condition tonight